Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we've done a number of these tutorials about Zim. Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework at zimjs.com for co coding creativity. It uh, is powered by CreateJS, and Adobe exports to CreateJS, so that's how it works. There's lots and lots of things that we can build with Zim, and we've been showing you all these things in the tutorials. So if you're just brand new here, you might want to go check the earlier tutorials, especially the first one on how to bring Zim into Adobe Animate with Zim Shim found in the code section. That's a zip file you can grab. Uh, let's see, we're going to do this tutorial on noise. Noise is used in generative art. It's quite amazing. It's basically an equation that gives us things like this. This is a radial uh, noise maneuver, but um, noise can make things like mountain ranges, for instance. And I've got, actually, I've got an example right here. So uh, this is the noise equation. It's an equation. Then we can decide how much we zoom into the equation. So if we zoom in, it gets smoother. And if we zoom out, there's us zooming out, it becomes bumpy and looks like noise, hence that's why it's called noise. So there's 1D noise. This is one dimensional noise we're looking at. We are, we are just moving over in the X uh, a certain number each time, but the 1D noise is giving us the height of the mountains, if you want, okay? Um, however, this is actually a 2D noise because we can also move through this noise equation in time with the slider. So what this is doing is sliding its way through the noise equation. It's just like uh, moving along the equation, whereas this is showing how bumpy it is. There it is, nice and smooth or smoother, and this moves along the smoothness of it. We liked how these look like vases, so we made an NFT called the Venusian Vase Maker, where it would automatically make a bunch of vases, or you could choose the controls as well and make them. <laughs> Isn't that neat? They do look like beautiful vases, though, don't you agree, if you turn them vertically? All right, so that's an example there. We can go to the docs here and look up noise. Noise. And we can see that here's our noise that we'll make. It, it will randomly seed. Every time you make a new noise object, it will randomly seed. But if you pass in a certain seed, then we'll get the same sort of random noise out of it. And that, that can be handy, because remember how I said we can make mountain ranges with noise? Imagine if we liked a mountain range, or we had some sort of map or terrain that was made from noise. The next time we go there, we want to see the same terrain all we have to do is remember the seed that we used, and the terrain will be the same. So with one small seed, like the number 10 or 300, whatever, that seed will uh, make the same random huge uh, mountain range, possibly. All right, so uh, there's 1D noise, as mentioned, 2D noise, 3 and, and so forth. So uh, all the way up to 4D, we just pass in one, two, three, or four numbers to that, and it will return a number between minus one and one. So just watch that if you're coming from the processing world, P5JS, I think their noise is between zero and one. Uh, our noise, we're using simplex noise. There's also Perlin noise, simplex noise. Uh, the the um, uh, code for that was returning between minus one and one, and that's what we use here in Zim. Well, let's uh, see how we can use this in Adobe Animate then. So we'll reduce this down. We'll make a new file from our presets. <laughs> and we're gonna use a very high web preset here. <laughs> like how Adobe has presets there. And then we're going to go into our more settings here and there's HTML. We have a template here. So we've got presets, we've got templates. And we could import our Zim Shim, but we've already done this. We already did it in a profile. So we've got presets, templates, profiles. <laughs> we've already done it with a profile. So I'm going to import the profile that we made way back in the first Zim uh, tutorials for Adobe Animate and hit OK. That brings in our Zim Shim, which is Zim basically, and then uh, also sets up some things here to center our, our content. 
So we hit OK. Let's save the file. File save as. And we'll call this one uh, 22. Ooh, we're at 22. And noise. There we go. Increase this a little bit and call it Zim 22 noise. That was the Swedish spelling of it. <clears throat> so, const noise. <laughs> That's the Swedish spelling again. Noise is equal to new noise. It's not. I'm teasing. And thank you, Adobe. Hey, Adobe engineers. Can you guys stop that from happening? That would be handy. Uh, every day, if we called it noise there, when I type noise with a capital N, it I put those brackets in there, it goes lowercase. Anyway, I may have mentioned that before. <laughs> Probably stop mentioning it now. So there's our noise, but there's a few ways that we can visualize noise. The most common is to just draw it into a shape. So um, we can see what a new shape looks like here in Zim. Const shape is equal to a new capital S, A-P-E, round brackets, capital S, uh, a new shape. And we will um, dot add that to the stage. When we add a shape, it'll add it as 0, 0 up in the top left corner. And then we want to work from there. Or we could have made the shape somewhere. We could have also given the shape a certain dimensions. But when we're freeform drawing on the whole stage, what we'll do is we'll sort of draw a noise equation uh, across the stage or the results of a noise equation across the stage. So to do that, we'll um, have a number of these, const num equals maybe 10 of them. And that will give us a spacing, uh, const spacing is equal to the stage width divided by the num minus one. If we have 10 points across the stage, then we have nine spacings in between them. Okay, and we will loop uh, num times. We're here in animate, so animate has a keyword called loop or uh, some sort of global variable called loop or something. So we didn't want to overwrite that. That was the only conflict that we really noticed. Well, a couple other massages, but um, in general, with respect to the code, that was a conflict. We have a Zim loop and Adobe has a loop, but if you want, you can just say, hey, loop is equal to Zim loop, like so. And, uh, or alternatively, we could have just used, oh, sorry, Zim loop function, don't run it. Or we could have said Zim dot loop there and used it without doing that. But if we want to carry on without worrying about <laughs> whether or not we're using a Zim loop or just not, we can uh, do that, assign the global loop to the Zim loop at this time. So we are looping through the num, and each time we're, oh, uh, right, we loop through the num each time we're given i, for instance. Oh, cut that out. Um, so loop num times each time we're given i. Let's start off with something simple like just making a new circle, a small circle, red, and we'll dot locate it across the stage at uh, whatever i is times the spacing. And then just at the height divided by two. Because we're given up here, we are given F for frame. F is the frame, S is the stage, width is the stage width, and height is the stage height. So you can use these variables too with Zim Shim. But back in, um, in Zim version Zim01, we implemented a new way of handling things. And so we, we gave these variables that are available for us. And so that's what we're using now. All right, uh, let's have a look. Control Enter. And there they are going across the screen like that, our 10 points. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use this, the single dimension noise method to tell us what height 
between zero, uh, between negative one, which is up here, and positive one, which is here. So we're going to have to multiply that by a magnify or a magnitude or something. We have to multiply that by say 300 so that that will result in better points. And we're going to end up seeing this noise equation going across here. But do you see why it's just 1D? Yes. Um, we just need one number as we go across. So uh, that would then instead, we would say shape dot well we could put the circles at the noise yeah let's do that that would be easier to, than draw in the shape to start so rather than the height divided by two we'll go directly to the noise dot simplex uh, 1d and then we want to put um, some value here that is based on the i so let's do i itself Okay, so imagine we have an equation, and I is then telling us where along that equation we want to, to get the matching value. So we go like this, and now we have, oopsies, we didn't do the magnitude. So we positioned it between negative 1 and 1. <laughs> all right, so that, that tells us a couple things. First of all, let's do it relative to the stage height divided by 2 plus that. And also, we need to multiply this by a factor. So multiply it, say, by 300. And now we get this. So now, here is the stage height divided by 2. And sometimes it's down here. Sometimes it's up here. So that's a noise equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from each of these points into the shape. And then we'll get one of these kind of zigzaggy kind of lines. Uh, that, by the way, we don't want to hard code down there. We can call it magnify. And we'll put it up above here. Okay. But now instead of a circle, let's, um, let's draw our lines. So that would be mm, shape dot uh, move to. We have to decide where to move to. So let's move to just a little bit off the stage to the left. If we don't do that, we're going to end up drawing a line from zero, zero down to this. And you would end up uh, seeing the edge of this line go from zero, zero down. So what I'm proposing is we move to move the pen to off the screen here minus 100 stage height divided by two that doesn't really matter too much then our first line two will be aligned to there okay it just depends on what we want to do we could have started here and then line to the next one at which point we'd always be starting our noise here and we see zigzags we could even end the noise here all the time and that way it looks like it's pinned between the edges uh, if we're doing it how we how I'm proposing, it'll look like the noise just goes right through and might go on forever. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're moving it to that height divided by two. And then we're dot line two. So here's uh, what's happening. We're lining two. I times the spacing. And then our noisy bump bump thing. And that should do it, I think. Okay, let's have a look. Control Enter. Uh, nope, not quite. Oh, we haven't set uh, the color of the line. So we do that with a, a stroke, and we can make it purple. And dot stroke style, that's the thickness of it, say three. Then we dot move to. Oopsies. So it looks like each time in our loop, ah, right, okay, that totally makes sense. Before we loop, we want to do this stuff to the shape. Well, that looked kind of cool too. So with this one, every time we looped, we started back here and drew the line out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we can do it on our shape right here, like so. 
before we loop, or indeed we could have done it up here, but uh, shape dot line two. Yes, there we go. So we started off here, we drew a line to here, and then we draw a line to each of our next ones. And every time we refresh, we get, oh, it's like a different mountain range. But that that is indeed quite noisy. Could we make that more smooth? Let, let's see what it looks like when we have a larger number, say 100 of them here. Ooh, there's kind of, that's our noise equation. So that's quite noisy looking. It's constantly going up and down, up and down. And that's because our number here is going, it's not, we're not zoomed in enough on the equation, so to speak. So let's um, choose a factor. Say if we chose 100, how zoomed in would we be? Or maybe 10, let's try 10. Oh, okay, that's better. Now it's not as noisy. We're starting to zoom in and we can start to see some peaks and valleys. If we do 100, how smooth will it be? Now we're zoomed in even more. So we're quite smooth. Do you see how that's kind of zooming in on it? Because we haven't moved very far in the noise equation. So a noise equation is, imagine it just as a bumpy line. And, and the smaller steps we take, the more these points will be next to one another. Okay, so the smaller, these are smaller steps now because we've divided by what we call a factor. And so we can put the factor up here, const factor is equal to, uh, I thought 10 looked pretty good just to experiment with for now. All right, so there's a factor of 10, a certain zoom, and there's our, our mountain range. Um, because we have 100 points, we can see that that's starting to curve there. But if you really want curves, instead of line two, which is doing a line two, you can do a curve two and sort of interpolate uh, along here uh, and, and get sort of smoother things with less, less points. Go take a look at some of the examples that we've done in Zim to find how, how to do that with the line two. But I think we're fine talking about it. Let's, let's go back to 10 lines here. Oh, uh, that is what, that's the number 10. Yeah, um, and then we're going to uh, the num, num was looping 10. Okay, so uh, what do we want to try next though? How about, well, let's keep it at 100 and let's fill it underneath. Or should we try moving it? Do you want to make the line move? Yeah. Okay, let's, um, let's see what the line looks like if we move it. So right now, the line looks like this. And what we're going to do is we'll keep the same zoom, but what we're going to do is move along the equation like that. So uh, we stay still, but the equation will move past us. All right. So to do that, we go to 2D, 2D noise. 2D accepts two parameters in here, and the other one we will call time, I guess. Okay. So for time, we put this in a ticker. Like this uh, ticker, tickler, <laughs> ticker dot add. So we'll add this arrow function right here. And then all of this stuff goes in the arrow function. So basically, in time, we're going to keep on redrawing the shape. Uh, to do that, we need to clear. Let me show you what it looks like when we keep on drawing over top, and you'll see why we need to clear in here. Okay, so over time, we're going to draw this. but We don't have a time yet. Um, so here, we will say const time is equal to zero. We'll just start at zero. We also want a time factor, const time, we'll call it t is equal to, it's actually quite a small amount that we'll want, 0 0.01, maybe even, maybe even, it, this will change the speed of, 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 you know, how we're perceiving us moving through this equation. So 0 0.01, and then down in here, we will change the time. This is in the ticker, it's going at the frame rate. We will say time, is equal to, or plus equals uh, t. So this is adding this little bit of time, uh, 60, 60 frames per second, 60 times a second, we add 
this little bit of time right here. Therefore, time is changing by just a little bit. And as we go through, we're getting a different location in the, uh, in the equation in time. So we go like this, control enter, and we have a look. Oops, a little bit of a mistake somewhere. Do you see it? Oh yeah. Ah, we don't want a constant time. <laughs> we want a let time. And that gives us this, ooh, exciting. Let's run that again. All right, so there it is moving in time, but we didn't clear the image, so it's kind of overwriting on itself here. Oh, this is all our all our changes to get where where we were, including my error change. All right, so let's um, clear this. Our shape dot clear. No, our shape dot clear. And control enter, and now we get that. Okay, we can slow that down by um, making time be a little bit less. We can make it smoother by increasing our factor. So here's our factor right there of 10. If we make it a factor of 100, here's what we get. Isn't that beautiful? Just sort of looks like random landscape, random bumps. So that's a bit different than a, a cosine and a sine equation, which can also be used in, com in combinations as well to make stuff like that but it's uh, quite easy to do with noise, as you see. If you were to look at this now, and you go, you'd probably be going, oh my God! But hopefully we've stepped you through it. You're welcome to watch this again. I know it takes a few times to get used to noise. Um, it's quite magnificent though, uh, for sure. So what do we want to do now? Um, let us fill it. Okay, we'll fill it. So to fill it, we would set the fill right here, dot fill. Uh, by the way, this is a Zim shape, and with Zim we can put these short little chainable, uh, it's called minified things. Let's go to the docs here. Type in shape. So there, there they are, move to, line to, arcs, etc. So all of this is available to us and has been in Flash and, and CreateJS and on the canvas, etc. If you want to use the full words, then you need to do it on the graphics property of the shape. So you'd have to constantly be going, I don't know, do I have an example of it here? Yeah. So in the past, we used to say shape.graphics is G, and then we'd say G.begin stroke, etc. Well, uh, so you, you don't have to do that anymore. All that, that's the older code. Now you can do it right on the shape, which means you can chain right onto the shape with one fell swoop like that, rather than doing it in two stages and always having to remember about the graphics. So, yay. All right, but we didn't bother putting, we never used the full words, <laughs> so we didn't bother putting them, putting them on the shape itself. But you can clear, there we are clearing, and uh, filling. Okay, so what we we're going to do, we were going to try and, uh, yeah, that's right, fill, and we'll fill it in purple, which means we wouldn't need the stroke stuff. I'll leave it in there, but we wouldn't need it. And uh, the other thing, though, we, we want to do is, uh, this will look kind of cool, but not as expected necessarily. As a matter of fact, let's, let's make that a bit bumpier, though. So you remember how? That factor, let's change it to 30. Ooh, nice. So that has a certain pleasantry to it. Uh, that's called winding when it when it uh, does that. But anyway, we're drawing a line from here where the curve goes all the way over to this edge, and then we stop. And so to fill it, it just automatically goes back to where it begins, off here. If we started there, then this would look a little bit better right now. It looks like the winding's gone off. If we started right here, it would be nice and at the point there, which looks pretty cool. looks like some sort of electric eel going through the water or something. But let's, um, let's make it look like waves. And we'll, we'll, what we want to do is draw our line. Probably, well, it doesn't matter too much, but we could draw it out here, then down, way down here, and then way across here, and then up. 
So we're going to draw one, two, three more points after each time. So in our ticker still, we say shape dot uh, line two, the 100, oh, sorry, uh, the width plus 100, and then comma, the height divided by two. Okay, so that, that just will move the next line off to the right here. I think we'd be fine just drawing it straight down to the corner would be good, but whatever, just because we started this one off, I'm gonna move that one off there as well. As a matter of fact, you wanna see what that looks like. Then, then we get something that looks a bit different. Now it looks like we're properly moving all the way through. You see that? where it, Because it's filling up to here and there. It looks like it's this eternal eel that's gone right through. Before it looked a bit different. It looked like it was starting here and fanning out to the left. Okay, but now we're going to go down. Dot uh, line 2. All the way to the width plus 100 comma, the height, plus 100. And then we're going to dot line 2, uh, minus 100. So we just drew, previously we drew one down to this corner way down here, and now we're going to minus 100 in the x, and height divided by 2 in the y. Oh, uh, no, down to the corner. Minus 100 and... Um, height plus 100. Okay, the same height as we had previously. Then we don't have to, we could close the path. That might be important if you actually see the path because if you don't close the path, the little corner gets eaten away, gets left off. If you close the path, then it will end that little corner with a cap uh, or whatever the corner. But anyway, we don't even see it, so I'm not going to bother. We go control enter. Ah. Oh. Isn't that great? We could have made this a full screen as well. Um, and uh, actually, full screen would have probably worked pretty well because our stage width and stage height would change automatically as we resize, and it would end up probably drawing this right across. Ah, no, we might have to change our. Yeah, we would have to put this in the resize so that the, the scale, or sorry, whatever the spacing wouldn't be constant. We'd have to let that go into full size. But anyway, leave that for another day. Uh, we could make this ooh, like orange and then you get some sort of... Ay, 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 that's, that's actually 60s. I was going to say 70s, but I think with that vibrant orange you're looking, you're looking at the 60s. If we drop the orange a little bit, um, maybe that would take us into the 70s. <laughs> I'm not sure. What do you think, Ken? you like, then you could use that as a backdrop to um, your app. Maybe slow it down. You know how to slow it down. Are you experts? There's our time factor. What if we go 0 0.01? So see what I mean about wanting it to be slow? And now we get this. Well, that's quite slow. <laughs> can't, can't even really tell that it's moving, but it's moving along there. 0 0.05 maybe. quite sensitive though, isn't it? And you can add, make that into a, um, a dial or a slider. And that's what we've been doing with all those examples. You can change how much you're zoomed in with a slider or a dial, and you can change the speed with a slider or dial. You can also move into other things. Let's, let's show you some other things then. So under examples, we have the collection right here of noise stuff. So that's kind of what we had been building. I forgot we changed our default button things and we, we updated this to the latest version of Zim, it looks like, without changing the button colors. Uh, so this is what we mean by sliders and dials. That's the speed. It's getting faster. Now it's getting slower. Um, we can change the number of bumps. I like how that sort of fans out. Now we've got more bumps happening. This one is how curvy it is. So here we're drawing curves. And if we don't draw curves, or if we basically make the curves look like lines, now we've got sort of more points on that. Okay, cool. What's this one doing? Oh, the size of them in general, smaller and bigger. That looks like a 70s. They must have discovered noise in the 70s. <laughs> I mean, that looks like 70s wallpaper or something like that. 
So that's that one. A mesh. So here's one where we're we're drawing points in time. So this will be um, simplex 3D because we've got X and Y for the points of the noise, plus we've got it moving in time. And then we're changing other things here, uh, like the alpha, the the how big the lines are, the speed of it, the size of them. And this one is what the time it's taking. So that can get us different effects that as well. And then here's blobs. So imagine that we take have a mountain of noise. Mountain of noise. Is this 40 then? It's a mountain of noise. And then we chop it in a, a plane and we move up and down the plane. That's what we're seeing here as we move in time. I don't know if one of these is the time. Oh, that's transparency. No, this is the zoom in. So the time doesn't have uh, anything here, but we can zoom in and out. And that's kind of neat. Look at when we zoom out. Doesn't it look like noise? Looks like, starts to looks like noise on a television, a bunch of pixels. If we zoom in, you can see what we've got going on here is we're tiling it to make it look like this kind of kaleidoscopic effect. But in a sense, that's sort of a cross section of our mountains that we're seeing as we move across that. Fascinating. I love it. So back in Zim, uh, under the examples, we did have a bunch of different examples of noise in here. I'll see if I can pick some out. That's just wiggling blobs, so it looks like noise, but it's not quite. That was the pen that we saw animating the pen. Bloob is noise. So this is radial noise along here. Autobahn is uh, radial noise as well. And we're using noise and the Zim generator to, to do that. There's the Venusian vase vendor. I think the site seems to be down. Let's see if it's back up. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, last time I was checking, it wasn't even loading in, but this is loading a little bit slowly, but at least I have the rest of the site showing up there. See if we can find, why don't we leave that to load and we'll come back to our examples, see if we can find some more noise. This looks like patterns, but that's just curves, uh, shape curving and overlapping one another to make sort of moiré patterns. Uh, the Lepton Lamp Lord was animating a pen, so that wasn't noise. Was this noise? That was animating the pen. I can't, I don't think we did noise. Oh, Wobbler. Wobbler was noise using sort of noise to make slit screen technology. That was pretty cool. I like that one. Uh, not sure if any of those were noise. Oh, down below here. Oh, okay. So now the code pen examples, there's um, a fair number. Let's move out on that. Some really pretty ones. That's the controlled noise that we saw earlier. I may have bypassed them already. I'm just kind of whipping through here. Doot, doot, doot. Particle art was the emitter, but this one, this is beautiful noise. Remember how we talked about changing it? So there's the curves we saw. Oh yeah, and that's like pointier. But here we have different colors. Let's take off the cycle so we can uh, make colors or cycle through colors. That was kind of a fun one. Beautiful noise. Anything different with noise? Uh, these electrical bolts were probably made with noise. Did this thing load yet? Four, four bad requests. Come on, baby! And still open, uh-oh. Open Resty. Uh, this is all on the what's called the interplanetary file system, and it looks like, wow, we we sold uh, a bunch of those. I guess there's only three less, seven of them, for a fair bit. Anyway, I, I can't even see them now. So it looks like there's a problem with the interplanetary file system that's supposed to last forever with these NFTs. <laughs> Let's hope it does. <laughs> it's a little on shaky grounds. Uh, here's a holiday example that we made where we projected this at a winter fest it was called and people like groups of people were coming up and taking uh, pictures of themselves we had a bunch of stilt walkers in in weird costumes and they were coming up and having this as the backdrop to their their group pictures isn't that cool so we're just animating some sparkly uh, that's a sprite sprite animating them up and down on the noise things 
Oh, is that getting you into the uh, into the mood? Full page mood. <laughs> full page, not full screen. Though. All right, isn't that neat? And let's take one last look at that at the code in there. We basically are having have, create our noise, create our shape. Then in time, we're changing the time. That adds one of the um, parameters there in the simplex 2D noise is the time. And the other one was how zoomed we're in. So that's based on the eye as we go across and um, some factors. So just basically we're passing two changing values into the noise. And then we're plotting that with um, based on I and based on a magnified distance from <laughs> the center. <laughs> Sorry, probably going, ah, right, uh, yeah. Certainly, if you haven't done this kind of stuff before, I, I understand. It can look a little bit gnarly. But hopefully we stepped through the steps. <laughs> hopefully we stepped through those steps so that it made sense to you. At least when you were seeing it, you're always welcome to watch this again. Yeah, it usually takes about five to 10 times of working with noise before you really see what's going on. And we saw the light and it's like, oh, cool, wow. All right, but it was certainly mysterious for a long time. All righty, I am Dr. Abstract, this fellow here, and uh, still recovering from a bit of a cold, so sorry if I, I sound a little bit under the weather here. And please come join us at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you there and have a look at those other tutorials too that are out there. All right. Cheers. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.